Hello everyone, I'm Harley from Garden Florida and in today's video we're going to check out the progress of the Atamoya fruits and Atamoya trees here in Bradenton, Florida. Now today's date is April 27th of the year 2023 and Atamoya are growing really good so I just wanted to do this update and update you all on the Atamoya. So let's get started. So right here as you see we have the Lisa Atamoya. So it is nighttime right now so that's why I have uh, the flash on. But as you see the Lisa Atamoya is doing really good. It's actually sized up to a really good size. Now this Lisa Atamoya is probably just about a month old i believe i pollinated it this specific fruit i pollinated but believe it or not after i started pollinating the least item with your fruit on this one many of them actually started forming as you see if you look up here so if you look on the top of the tree actually we have a few fruits right here on the very top and believe it or not but these two fruits actually set on their own so I'm very excited that uh, these two set on their own because Elisa Atemoya actually has a reputation of actually being a cultivar of Atemoya that is not known for setting fruit on its own without hand pollination such as the Gefner Atemoya. But as you see, the nonetheless, the Elisa Atemoya, I realized that this year, as long as you have the pollinators around, so in the natural pollinator for the Atemoya or Ananasia fruit trees here in Florida is the Nitsula beetle. And the nitsulid beetles can be very small. So yeah, this fruit was actually pollinated on its own. And like I said, if you want to actually encourage the pollinators and natural pollinators of these fruits in Florida, like this is a flower that I believe just actually set. So the reason I think it's set is because, so the fruit is actually won't come off on its own. So when you have like little things like this, you can actually lightly tap it. And if it's actually very strong, it's more than likely set because at that stage, if a fruit that size is not set, and it's still growing then more than likely it's set but if it actually didn't set it will fall off really easily so this is the lisa atemoya from the outside as you see it's quite a big tree and it actually has fruits hanging all inside so as you see here's another fruit hiding and it's actually really protected so it has it won't get sunburned at least i don't think so as you see this is a close-up of the lisa atemoya as you see it's about the size of two finger lengths so it's sizing up really nice and uh, this is the this is Elisa Atemoya New Growth. And I've been having to fight the potato leaf hoppers. So if your leaves are curling on your Ananasia fruit trees, I recommend spraying something called Pyganic. That's an organic spray. And I actually just sprayed about two days ago. So I don't see any baby potato leaf hoppers, which is good. So right here is actually a bag I put. Now these bags are optional. I'm actually gonna remove it because I was just trying to test out how these would look as the Atemojas grow. Now, a reason why you might want this bag is because a Nona seed borer, which is a Nona pest here in Florida. And what the pests do is basically they'll just penetrate. So basically the Anona seed borers will penetrate uh, Anona fruits when they're about this size, like the size of a marble. And what they'll actually do is lay their eggs in little fruits, the seeds and the seeds of the little fruits. And what they'll do is as the fruit grows, basically the, um, the Anona seed borer grows out of the seed and crawls out of, bores out of the anona fruit and it'll basically ruin the fruit from the inside out. And it's not something good to find out after you grow these fruits all season. Bagging your fruits definitely helps. Fortunately in my area, I don't really have trouble with them, but I am gonna bag them just for the sun scorching reasons. And this is the Atemoja I didn't realize I had down there. So it's really cool. Okay, so actually right behind me, I have a Gefner Atemoja tree. Now I'm gonna show you the Gefner Atemoja tree and very easily you're gonna be able to notice the differences between both of the fruits because one of the fruits, the Gefner, is much more spikier and much more pokier than the Lisa Atemoja. So let me show you. So here we have the Gefner Atemoja tree. This one actually is recovering. So here we have the Gefner Atemoja tree. This is a beautiful tree once as well. And here we have the fruits forming. So automatically you might be able to tell that the Gefner is somewhat different looking than the Lisa just because of the spikes as I mentioned earlier. So just to show you really quick what a Gefner looks like and I'm going to show you right here what a Lisa looks like right next to it. So we're going to walk to where Lisa is. So this is a Lisa. As you see the spikes are much more like lobed and rounded. Not that pokey. And then we have the Gefner, which is, you can tell, a little more pokier. To an untrained eye, they might look the same, but to someone who just looks at his Atemoya all day, they definitely are much pointier. Now, the reason why I love Gefner Atemoya is because I did not do any hand pollination on these fruits. And just look at all these fruits. Now, the downside to not hand pollinating, other than 
the fact that you don't have to pollinate any in these all set is that you are going to get a lot of irregular shaped fruits now the reason why the fruits are irregular shaped is because typically when the nitsilid beetles the ananasia fruit tree natural pollinator when they're doing it naturally they tend to not pollinate the best so as you see you get like these little atemodias that are not like so uniform by uniform they're all they're gonna be like really beautiful shaped as you see like some of them like this one a little bit weird looking but nonetheless i love them all and look at this one like that one i'm just gonna i don't know it's set like it's set because look it was not coming up but it's <laughs> it looks like a little i don't know it's nothing but nonetheless, I really like this Geffner at the Monja because it's just really, it's so old reliable. You can always rely on the Geffners. And especially if you don't have a lot of time or you just don't want to attempt to learn hand pollination because it's something that probably you'll have to practice a lot with. I would go with the Geffner. Now I do have two Geffner trees planted, although I do have more Geffner trees in pots. But this is another Geffner tree that I have planted. And I just want to show you guys the fruit set that I set like alone. I didn't do any of this fruit set. So I actually set three fruits like all within very close proximity. I think it looks cool, so I'll leave them. I'll let this one set. And this one as well has been attacked very hard by potato leaf hoppers. But as you see, like the new growth is actually looking good, but like you could see the old growth, it just looks ratty. And you can see if there's another uh, get at the one right there. So overall, like I'm really excited to to fruit these. Uh, anonas now i do have other anonas like i don't have all just at the mojas i do have some other fruiting uh, anonas such as sugar apple which i'll show you right here and the fruit is forming i didn't have to do any hand pollination on this one i didn't have to do any hand pollination but i actually don't want them to pollinate too much just because I don't want this tree just setting a bunch of fruit, although it's really easy to because I've never actually had to hand pollinate this on a Vietnamese sugar apple. It just actually tends to set on its own. And as you see, it's actually flowering from everywhere. That's awesome. And I believe it actually has some fruit set. Ah, oh, look, these little baby fruit. And I believe these are more actually fruit set right here. Yeah, because they're not coming off. I'm gonna show you once again. So something I wanna show y'all really quick are my red alama flowers, Anona diversifolia. So let me show you the tree. Alrighty, y'all, real quick, I wanna show you my llama because although it's not holding fruit, I believe it's about to. So these two flowers are here. I hand pollinated and they were actually setting, one was male, one was female. So I was able to actually use a llama pollen 100% because I've been using like sugar apple pollen and other uh, pollens throughout the months, throughout the weeks, but none has set. And I was finally able to align a few flowers. I think this is the one that set, but we'll see. So, as you see the beautiful llama leaves. Alrighty, y'all, just wanted to show y'all. Hopefully we're gonna get a fruit set at this llama. Beautiful llama tree. Like I said, all I needed uh, these upper flowers. And then I also pollinated one back here which if I don't see it, then it fell off. Oh no, I see it, okay, <laughs> cool. So I pollinated that one, so I think that one might have said because I used, like I said, male pollen, male alama pollen on the same tree from the own tree. So everyone, just wanted to show you all that and an update of my fruiting anonas. All right, everyone, I'm Harley from Garden, Florida. I hope you enjoyed this anona fruit tree update here at my house in Bradenton, Florida. Now, tomorrow I'm actually gonna be going to Thailand, so I can't wait to enjoy all the durian, mango seed, and all the Thai fruits there. Hope you guys stay in tune for whatever I find there, whatever cool fruits I find there. So everyone, I'm Harley from Garden, Florida, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye now.